what to do after the tutorial in Stranded Deep. This video is mostly made up of advanced tips for hardcore gamers, but for those of you who are just starting out with the game, here is what you should probably do after completing the tutorial. The axe is one of the most commonly used items in Stranded Deep. Go down here and pin its recipe to your screen. The axe requires a lashing rope, one stick and two stone tools. Each island is different, so you will have to search around your starting island for the ingredients. I grab a stick, a stone, another stone and then I need fibrous leaves. I can harvest four of these or I can harvest a yucca plant. Don't worry, these regrow after two days or three days on hard mode. Create the lashing using the crafting menu or you can use the quick craft menu which I use to create two stone tools. Then as you can see in the top left I have enough to create the crude axe. You should probably set up a water still since it offers a renewable source of water but it says you need crafting level 2. As you see here you should be very close to level 2 by now. You just need to build or craft something else. I suggest you build a fire pit. It costs three stones and even though stones are precious in this game, the fire pit is a necessity on your home island. After that, build a fire spit. It takes just three sticks and a lashing rope and there, as you see, you are at crafting level two. You can now build the water still. If you haven't decided where you want your base to go yet, then create three spears and you will reach the correct crafting level. If you go to your building menu, the water still is unlocked. Pin the recipe up here while you look for the materials. Gather together your materials. You will find cloth washed up around the edges of your island. If you are unlucky, you will have to swim to another island to pick up cloth, but it is not likely. In many cases, the cloth is well hidden rather than absent. You already know how to get stones, a rope lashing, a palm frond, so here is how you get the coconut flask. Make another lashing, then find a coconut with the yellow skin still on, and combine the lashing and coconut in the crafting menu. You now have all the ingredients for your first water still. Place it down and you have a choice. You can add palm fronds underneath or you can add fibrous leaves. After a while, your water still will start to fill up and you may then take a drink or later fill up flasks to transport water for farming and so forth. Each water still will fill to give you four portions of water. Each portion takes one minute and 40 seconds to generate. Most veteran players would agree that once you have your food and water set up, that the rest of the game is yours to explore. Consider going through the various menus and looking at the things you can build. The crude hammer is very good if you want to build your first raft. The spear is great for hunting. The fishing rod is just a novelty item. The fishing spear is good for catching crabs and fish. And the crude hoe is great if you want to start farming. If you are ever stuck for what to do next, consider exploring your own island and specifically its waters or take a look at some of the new stuff that you can build or craft. Sharks have a natural weakness. All you have to do is put your back against a flat surface and a shark cannot attack you because it would have to stop once it strikes. Find a good spot and snipe the shark as it swims around. It cannot attack you unless you come away from the object or surface behind you. Rainfall revives dead farm plants. When your plants die, the only contextual action you can take is to use the hoe to clear the area. However, if you allow the rain to water your dead farm, it somehow revives your plants. You have to be present on the island while it is raining for the revival to work. Wait for the farm to register that it now has water and then you may go to sleep, visit other islands and so forth and it will take about two days for your newly revived plant to return. The effectiveness of bird snares. 
Bird snares generate food seemingly infinitely. So long as you remove the dead birds so that live ones may be caught, there seems to be no limit to how many you may catch. Bird snares seem to refill faster when you are present on the island. Like crabs and bats, birds seem to appear at certain times of the day, most notably in the morning. Drop them on the floor and leave them unskinned, and they won't rot away. Reload your game after getting poisoned. If you are poisoned by a fish, snake, or plant, you need to use a PP pee -pee plant and a flask to create an antidote, or it will eventually kill you. Try to farm at least one PP plant, because they do not regrow in the wild. Getting poisoned is so common in Stranded Deep that it is usually easier to reload your save rather than going through the hassle of finding a PP and making an antidote. Don't trust the sun when navigating. Do not navigate by the position of the sun. In your game, the sun will rise in a direction between east and southeast. As for midday and sunset, all bets are off. It can set midday in a variety of northern directions, and it can set anywhere from west to due north. On the other hand, the ocean current always goes from north to south no matter which map you load into which is handy if you have misplaced your raft, since you may be able to swim south and catch up to it. Sunken ships are more visible at night. Here, at night, you can clearly see the bubbling water, which indicates that there is a shipwreck over there and over here. However, from the same place during the day, the bubbles are barely visible. Some underwater locations, such as the plane crash, have no visible bubbles or markers, so it always pays to explore when you are underwater. Fueling your fires with different leaves. Use fibrous leaves on water stills instead of using palm fronds. Palm fronds are better used on fires. Fibrous leaves and palm leaves give you one portion of water per leaf. However, palm fronds give you far more fuel than fibrous leaves. Try not to use sticks for fires, because sticks become harder to source as you play the game. As palm fronds become scarcer near the end of the game, you may start using fibrous leaves on fires as well. It is less efficient, but at least they are renewable. It doesn't matter from where you chop a tree. Don't worry about cutting it from the very bottom in order to preserve the most wood. Even if you chop a tree from the very top, you still get a full tree at the end of it. Also, wooden crates sink, which is great because they don't float away, but disastrous if you lose them in the open sea. Making early game progress. Work towards setting up at least one corrugated metal farm with a yucca plant on it along with building more water stills. Work towards a raft with a base, floor, rudder, and sail. Try out the different buildings to learn their purpose. Build more farms, especially for potatoes because they become very valuable during the late game period. Set up more efficient cooking systems, better watering flasks, food catching devices, and more sophisticated vehicles to help you explore more easily. After this, your job is to expand and explore. You explore to find more resources, to find boxes with rare items, and to find the bosses so that you may reach the story's ending. Using different types of lights. Use a torch when you go swimming and diving into dark areas. Use the lanterns to light your camp. Torches and lamps never run out of power, so you should use them however and whenever you wish. The brightest perpetual light comes from the furnace, but despite its bright light, it cannot be seen from very far out at sea. Setting up a lighthouse to help you find your way home is not very effective. Hit the yucca plants even if you don't need them. There should be three yucca plants per island. Get into the habit of harvesting them whenever you see them. 
This restarts the growing process so that you can harvest again in two days. You can harvest in a hurry, let them pile up, and return later to collect them because they do not despawn or rot. The same is also true for farms. Get yourself a tool belt. Do not brush off the idea of a tool belt. It is one of the game's best quality of life features. Build it using the menu over here. It allows you to hotkey some of your most used items, which also takes them out of your current inventory. On consoles, hold L1 or the LB on Xbox, and it brings up your tool belt menu. I press right on the D-pad to select the open space on the right. Then I choose the refined knife and I enter it into the tool belt. Now I can quickly switch between these items using the D-pad on my controller. Consider adding the flashlight to the top or bottom slot on your tool belt. It gives you a convenient source of light, which will come in handy the more you progress through the game. Regain health with the healthy status effect. If you lose some of your life, the only way to recover it is to gain the healthy status. You cannot be marked as poisoned or have sunstroke. To get the healthy status, you need to have enough food, water and sleep. See how, once I eat and drink, my health bar starts to refill. I will just speed up the video a little here. Navigating from your own island. Point sticks towards the island that you are visiting, they won't blow away or move, and you can walk over them without disturbing them. Perhaps the best in-game markers are the bird snares, because you can point them in a specific direction, you can label them if needed, and the dead birds hanging from them make them very easy to see from a distance. Navigating from other islands. Use shelters to point your way home. You go directly from your starting island to another island, and when you get there, you build a shelter right away that points in the direction of home. Navigation is tricky in Stranded Deep. It becomes a lot easier when you have the gyrocopter, because it moves quickly, it goes in a straight line, and it has its own compass. On the outer islands, it is very difficult to define a direct line home, so simply save on the island using your sleeping bag, and then check your cartography map to make a note of where you are. In getting home, head towards one of the inner islands, and the shelter you built previously will point you the way home. What to take when visiting other islands? When you visit a new island, take all of the tools and materials you need to build a shelter and a water still. It allows you to save and it removes your water worries. If this is your first point of contact and you made a direct line from home, then you may build a shelter and point it towards your home island so that you may confidently navigate home. If you are looking to visit islands further away, then take your items for water stills and such, but also carry a full jerry can of fuel, an antidote, take your spears, your compass, and your sleeping bag. Additionally, and by default, take your tool belt with items such as your axe, knife, torch, and so forth. Farming yucca plants is a resource positive activity. The yucca leaves are the ultimate renewable in this game. They make rope, water, and fuel for fires. The trees also regrow in just two days on standard difficulty. This plant creates six leaves, which means six portions of water through water stills. This plant only uses two water portions between harvests, leaving plenty of leaves left over for other uses. Work towards corrugated metal farms. Metal farms have eight water slots. If you water a metal farm fully, it will last an awfully long time before it needs watering again. In addition, when it rains, your metal farms receive up to eight slots of free water. Thanks to corrugated metal farms, you can easily spend extended amounts of time away from your home island without worrying that your plants will die. How time works when you are sleeping. 
As you sleep, your water and food reserves go down and your SPF and your tiredness recovers. Your campfire will cook food and eventually burn out while you sleep. And if your water stills have plant matter, then they will refill as you sleep. If it is raining and you go to sleep, then all the benefits from the rain will stop. This means your water stills and your farms will stop refilling with rainwater. The same is true if you reload into a save while it is raining. For example, if it is raining and you save, then that is fine. But if you were to reload into that save, even though the raining animation is still present, the benefits from the rainfall will have stopped. Stick around on your island when it rains. When it is raining on your island, wait for your farms and your water stills to fill up before you leave the island or before you sleep. You don't have to stick around and watch your farms, just remain on your island while it rains. Raining on another island. If it rains on one island, there is no guarantee that it rains on others. If you are away from your home base and it starts to rain, don't assume that it is also raining on your base. On the other hand, if it is raining while you are out at sea, then it is anybody's guess as to which islands are being watered. Map using the gyrocopter and cartography feature. After you have played the game for long enough, you will get a general feel for where things are. Make a direct line trip towards the islands and set up shelters that point back towards your home island. Making sure to check the cartography map each time you land on a new island so as to help you understand where the island actually is. Not for nothing, but during the footage you just saw, I was flying perfectly due south for almost the entire trip, and yet I landed on the island over here rather than the ones to the south over here. Photographing the cartography map. Some people like to photograph the cartography map and then perhaps edit and draw on the map to both help them navigate and to name their islands and so forth. Just remember to turn your phone so that north is actually at the top of your map screen, which is what you would expect from a regular map. See how when I turn my phone the correct way, north is pointing upwards as it does on most maps which is easier to use because it resembles a normal map. Swimming, motoring and flying. Do yourself a favour and find a way to hold the directional button or analogue stick so that you can swim, fly or motorboat in the same direction for extended periods. It is especially helpful if you are swimming between islands because you can run off and take a toilet break while your character visits another location and quite possibly improves its physical skills. Stripping islands of their resources. If you like the idea of stripping an island for all of its resources, then don't forget the clay in the sea, the shipwrecks and the sharks for leather. Explore underwater because some locations have no markers or bubbling indicators to show you where they are. Is hunting level 7 bugged? Cooking and hunting takes a long time to level up. It takes a lot of hunting to fill the boxes on your watch between levels 5, 6 and 7. Luckily, even at level 4 hunting, you can take down the bosses without too many wasted resources Crabs and small fish give you the least experience, big hogs, giant crabs and sharks give you the most. Passive Hunter Leveling with Bird Snares Set up a few bird snares. The bird snares fill without any input from you. Every time you collect them, you receive experience points for hunting. Having bird snares and collecting them from time to time is an almost passive way of continuing to level up your hunting skills. Bird snares use stones, so you probably shouldn't build too many. Hold down the chop button. In several cases, it is better to hold a button rather than to repeatedly press it. Stand beside a tree and hold down the button to chop the tree. Hold down the button when you are mining for rock or clay. If you are hunting, then you can hold the attack button to repeatedly strike an enemy. 
also, when you are building, place the structure and then hold down the build button to complete the structure. Leave things where they are useful. Leave your fire lighter near where you have a fire, such as your campfire and your fuel still. It is a lot more convenient since they do not despawn or disappear. Here I grow my fibrous leaves in farms near the water stills for easy refilling. Down here is my hoe and my flasks for more convenient farming. The same is true for boxes. For example, I left skins near the leather tanner, I put cloth in this one, I put the planks I made from the station into this box and so forth. Typically put your resources in boxes and leave your tools on the floor since you are more likely to need the tools more often than you would need the resources. The ethics of re-rolling the randomized boxes. There are a lot of exploits in this game. This video avoids almost all of them, so that if you wish, you can play the game the way the developers intended. However, I will describe two ways you can bend the rules to redress the imbalance that procedurally generated games can produce. When you pick up a crate or open a locker, the contents inside are randomized. You may get parts for a gyrocopter or a piece of cloth. There is no way of knowing. As a result, you may end up with 11 compasses and only two parts for your motorboat. If you are missing a certain part for a building or a vehicle, then take a box to a save point and make a save. Then, for the first time, look inside the box. If you don't like what you see, then reload and try again. Some people may abuse this function, but it is a big help if you need a final piece for a certain building or machine. For example, when you make the fuel still, you need a jerry can for the building, and then you need an extra jerry can so that you can carry the fuel from the fuel still to your motor. However, since finding two jerry cans is all about luck, you can regen your boxes until you get the one you need. The Stone Plank Station and your new axe. As mentioned in the last tip, there are two circumstances where it is okay to bend the rules, and this is one of them. Stones are a very finite resource that becomes harder to find the longer you play the game. On another note, the refined axe is probably one of your most overused tools in the entire game. Instead of burning through your stones, making and remaking the refined axe, you can instead create a plank station and then destroy it. When you destroy a plank station, your refined axe is returned to you in perfect condition. Here is my axe that is almost broken at 17% durability. I have all the ingredients for the plank station. If you have your refined axe in your tool belt, then make sure you are holding it before you continue. I build a plank station. I destroy the plank station and there is the brand new axe. If you are at crafting level 7, you also get all of your materials back, so you don't even lose any wood or anything when you destroy your plank station. This tip alone will allow you to extend your gameplay far beyond what you could have done if you rebuilt your new refined axe every time yours broke. At the very least, it saves you a bunch of stones that you can then put towards other projects. Farming PP to Stockpile Antidotes If you don't care for my tip earlier about loading after you have been poisoned, then you should consider stockpiling antidotes. Set up a PP farm and whenever it is time to harvest, turn it into an antidote and create a stockpile. If you have nothing else, a shark repellent will cure your poison. One of its ingredients is an antidote. Finding those darn bosses. There is an ending to this game, but first you need to find and kill three bosses. Head over to the cartography map on the menu screen and look for the skull and crossbone areas. Preparations before each big boss. Take the sleeping bag so that you can set it up and save before you take on the boss. With the sleeping bag, you can also save on the raft. 
Consider taking breath boost potions and perhaps air tanks so that you can stay underwater for longer. Take a single bandage that you will only use at the very end of the fight. Remember that you won't get your refined spears back, so perhaps consider using crude spears or the spear gun. Having a higher hunting level is also good, but even at level 4, the bosses are not too challenging. Tips for killing the Megalodon boss in Stranded Deep This is one of the easiest bosses for a few reasons. You can fight it near the surface, its attacks are not as deadly as they first seem, and it has the lowest HP of all the bosses. Fight it with a mixture of crude and refined spears. You won't get your spears back, so keep this in mind if you are running low on stones for refined spears. If you don't want to chase it down and beast it out, then find a safe spot and snipe at it as it approaches. Under the tail fin is pretty safe. Take a bandage if you wish, only apply it after the fight is over. If you are grabbed by the shark, try to stab it as it swims. Careful and controlled aiming, take a breath when you need to, and you will be just fine. Tips for killing the Great Abaya in Stranded Deep This is a difficult boss to find because its marker is so small. This boss has the second highest HP. Take your gyrocopter, set up your sleeping bag, and save. You need to find a safe spot within the wreckage. Under the cannons is pretty safe. If you don't mind the risk of getting bitten, you can nip up for air at various intervals during the fight, or you can take a breath boost and air tanks so that you may hide within your safe spot for the entire fight. You won't get your spears back, so the spear gun or crude spears are quite sufficient for this fight. Tips for killing Lucia the Great in Stranded Deep This is the boss with 1000 HP. Its attacks are problematic, but you can tank a bunch of them before really starting to suffer. You can land on the boy, but don't. Take your breath boost, you only need one, have a few air canisters, and follow the boy chain until you reach a point where the boss stops attacking you. From this location, throw spears until it dies. Do it very carefully. I suggest refined spears. You won't get them back, but if this is your last boss, the refined spears are not super vital for surviving out the game. The biggest threat during this fight is running out of spears before the boss dies or drowning before you reach the surface to take a breath. Which items do you need to complete the game? You need two clay flasks of water, many servings of food, preferably smoked meat or rations, and two jerry cans of fuel. You need to craft the components you won from the three bosses. They do not require materials. They are one-time items that you use only to fix the plane. Don't craft the story parts until you need them. You can craft the trophies, but don't craft the story parts until you are ready to end the game. You don't need to collect materials, so you can leave the crafting until the final stages of the game. Craft them early, and you run the risk of losing them, and them somehow glitching away in a manner that softlocks you out of completing the game. Unpicked plants do not rot. If you leave things like potatoes and fruits on their natural plants, they do not disappear or rot. You can leave them on the plant until you are ready to start farming them. If your potato plants have disappeared, it may just be very well hidden. Coconuts do not respawn, palm trees do not regrow, and rotten fruit can still be planted, but rotten potatoes cannot, though rotten potatoes can be placed into fuel stills. There is a very subtle durability indicator. There is a white transparent layer that sits over your tools and consumables. 
This axe is at 61%. If you look very closely, you can see a white transparent layer over the axe. The line is just there. It is easier to see with consumables. I have two full coconuts. I take a drink from this one. Notice how the one on the top has a far darker color than the lighter colored one on the right. Here I have a clay flask. I fill it with two portions of water. You can see how the white transparent layer indicates that the flask is partially full. Wait 10 seconds between certain meals. If you drink two coconuts, then you'll be fine. If you drink more than two in quick succession, then you will become ill. The same is true if you quickly eat fruit and eggs. To avoid this, consume two of your desired item, then wait 10 seconds before consuming again. If you are tired of flipping between full and empty coconuts, then drop them on the floor after you drink and pick it up again later when you need it. Grabbing and throwing your vehicles. If you are struggling to flip over your raft, try raising it aloft and throwing it. Also, you can grab and pull your gyrocopter if it lands on the ocean floor. If it falls while you are out at sea, then it falls too quickly for you to catch it. Starting again before you start for real. Regenerate your starting island, i.e. start the game again, if your starting island doesn't have two stone deposits. If there isn't even one stone deposit, then you may have created a bugged map that doesn't have stone deposits anywhere. Beware that some stone deposits are very well hidden, like in this video. Or this stone deposit nestled here. Also, all the islands should have three yucca plants. If yours does not, then start again with a new island. Hunting and hunting levels. Get your hunting level up before you go shark hunting. At hunting level 1, you need a whopping 10 crude spears to kill a regular shark like a hammerhead. At hunting level 7, you need only 6 crude spears. The most powerful weapon in the game is the refined spear if you throw it. At hunting level 7, you need only 3 refined spears to kill a regular shark. Leveling up your hunting starts to matter when you are taking down the bosses. The higher your level is, the fewer resources you waste as you battle the bosses. Use regular spears to hunt sharks. The reason most people use regular spears to hunt sharks instead of the super powerful refined spears is because if you miss, then you lose your refined spear. Refined spears are made with stones, and stones are the most limited resource in this game. The spear gun is not all that powerful, but it is easy to use and often more fun than throwing spears. More sails doesn't mean more speed. Adding more sails doesn't affect how quickly your raft moves. Smaller boats will steer more quickly, but do not move any faster than larger boats. Having a barrel raft, wood raft, tire, or buoy raft doesn't affect its speed, and there is no noticeable difference between boat steering and raft material. A shark cannot flip your raft. It doesn't matter how small your raft is, it will not be turned over by storms or sharks. There is only one exception to this rule. If you are carrying an unsecured load, such as tires, or perhaps your gyrocopter, then storms or sharks may shift its position, causing the load to move and to tip over your boat. If you have secured loads, such as crates on shelves, then storms and sharks pose no threat to your raft. Aim using the finger on the hand and not the dot. Even at a middle to extended distance away, aiming with the finger instead of the white dot seems to compensate for the projectile drop that you get with the spear. Objects turning red as you build them. While building rafts and the gyrocopter, some parts may be highlighted in red, indicating that you cannot build them there. 
you can see here that nothing is blocking the blades from being attached, but the game won't allow me to attach them. In these cases, you have two options. You can drag and move the raft or gyrocopter into a better position, or you can reload a save and start building in a different location. Hunting crabs to extinction. Consider hunting all of the crabs on your island. They will not respawn for seven days, which avoids the petty annoyances that crabs create. If you hunt crabs and keep their unskinned bodies in a pile, in many cases they will not respawn on your home island. Sharks and other wildlife do respawn, except for crabs if you pull the crab extinction trick mentioned earlier. Smarter resource storage for transportation. Transport a palm bushel rather than palm fronds and then you can take much more. Cut up the palm bushels when you get back to your base, where it doesn't matter if your axe breaks. Take tree trunks back to your base for storage and for cutting up when you need them, or for processing into planks. Breaking things apart on other islands is time consuming, it's a hassle, and you run the risk of your axe breaking. Transport fibrous leaves and turn them into lashings when you get back to your home base. You can get 24 fibrous leaves into a single inventory slot, but only 4 lashings per slot. Use your raft to transport larger items. You should probably make peace with the idea that you will have to transport bulky materials on your raft, things like tires, barrels and gyrocopters, so in order to transport them you are going to need a larger raft. The larger your raft is, then the more you can carry without sinking. This doesn't apply to secured loads, such as crates on shelves. Finding lost items using pinned recipes. Items in Stranded Deep will often go missing or clip through scenery so that you cannot grab them. Stones are pretty valuable. Pin a recipe that uses a stone and move it around the target area. You need to be near and looking in the direction of the item for it to register on your recipe. Craft the recipe using the item and the material will be drawn from the wilderness before it is drawn from your inventory. A similar trick involves the stacking feature. I am building a stack of fibrous leaves. I know there are fibrous leaves stuck behind that rocky area there. When I create a pile of leaves, it picks up those that are hidden behind the rocks. How to build with container walls. To use container walls, you bash them off with your axe and you transport the item to where you wish to build. If the container is close by, you can do what I am doing here with the build feature. People use container walls because they can be better seen from a distance away. Quick fire tips. Smoked meat doesn't spoil and dead unskinned animals do not spoil or despawn. You can put your spoiled potatoes into the fuel still and they will still work to make fuel. You can make leather from the hides you get from hogs and from sharks. The flare is used to light up the night sky for an in-game hour. Your character will swim faster with empty hands. Look for those yellow lines or yellow bars on boats. Press and hold the jump button while looking at them and you will mantle up onto deck. When you are in water, press and hold the jump button to get onto your raft more easily. If you are swimming and drowning, press the jump button repeatedly to surface more quickly. Some people prefer to harvest fibrous leaves at night because their outline is easier to see in the dark. You cannot catch bats with bird snares, but if you walk up close, you can hunt them if you wish. You only need to sleep when you get the tiredness debuff. You get tired more quickly from constructing and swimming. The higher your physical level, the longer it takes to become tired. 
Your water stills stop using leaves when it is raining, so you can fill up your water stills with plant matter even when it is raining without any worry of wastage. Do not fear groupers, they are big, harmless and very easy to hunt. Foundations act as ground flooring. The option to build flooring is for people who want to build multi-storey structures. The flooring option is for the second floor and onwards. You don't get your plants back if you clear a farming spot, so wait for a harvest before you clear. The game stacks cooked and raw meat in these same locations. It may look as if your cooked meat has vanished, but it is just stacked in the same location as the raw meat. If you are overheated, you can go for a swim and cool off, or you can eat an aloe plant for a quick fix. Have two rudders and two sails, one at each end, so that you don't have to turn your raft around each time you use it. In my case, I have the boat engine on one side and the sail and rudder on the other. When crafting, the system uses the items in your view before it uses those in your inventory, which is handy if you want to retrieve some items that have clipped through the environment. You can transport your gyrocopter by boat if needs be. The shelves on each side helps stop the gyrocopter falling off during storms. Try to turn and stab the shark as it grabs you and drags you through the sea. It doesn't look like I am hitting the shark, but you can hear the stabbing sound effect as I strike the shark's hitbox. Try to exploit enemy pathfinding. Attack crabs from behind, outrun snakes, and run into the water to avoid boars. Jump on rocks to avoid enemies. Stranded Deep is a good game. It rubs up against greatness in many ways. It's only a shame it doesn't have the sort of AAA money required to polish things up and make them a little more realistic and interactive. The worst thing about this game is the very many exploits that exist, which, as I learned, will ruin your gaming experience. As survival sandbox games go, Stranded Deep elevates the genre. I threw well over 100 hours into this game, and I can't say that I regret it. Thank you Beam Team and Fun Labs.